Let's get right to it. Today's uh, record-breaking week, anyway. Let's yeah. say that on Wall Street. We have Yudi Chang of Ace Investment Strategist, who has the best ways for investors to make money out of the Affordable Care Act. Believe it or not, you can make money out of that disaster. Jeff Duncan, Duncan Financial Management, says U.S. equities may run out of steam. And Todd Harwitz and Sandra Smith, look who's here in the pits of the CME. Sandy, I want to start with you, but I'm going to start with you talking about something that Todd told me in the notes that he sent out uh, before today's program. He said that this is one of the least loved rallies in Wall Street history. That is, despite the fact that some people are making a lot of profit, a lot of other people aren't, and it ain't a well-loved rally. Do you agree? Yes, I mean, the numbers prove it. Stock mutual fund, inf uh, fund inflows uh, really have shown that investors have only tiptoed uh, back into this rally towards the end of the year here. But the fact of the matter is, it's a strong rally. Uh, you've got the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, but you've also got the Russell and the S&P 500 mid-cap. It's basically a broad-based rally uh, across the board. And, David, bottom line, a lot of investors have missed out on this rally. And if you look at history to give us an idea of what we we could see in the new year. If you look back to 1950, there's been 17 times where the S&P 500 has gained an, uh, posted an annual gain of 20% or more. And history shows that 82% of the time, the stock market goes on to rally in the following year. Uh, so right now, the history That's says that we could stat. get a rally next year. Investors don't want to miss that one. Well, Todd, Todd, pick up on that, what Sandra was saying. I mean, this is what you're looking at right now. Hi, sure. Hi, David. It, it is the most hated rally ever because nobody believes it. But the real truth is, is that the average Joe, the small guy, he hasn't been able, really been able to participate in this rally because they really don't have the same funding. They don't have the same benefit that is afforded to them from the Federal Reserve, the ability to get that cheap money to go pour it into the equity market, which is why we're railing right now. 5% of the people control 82% of the stock market. So we're, we're seeing this as a Wall Street rally. The Main Street has not really participated because, A, look at tomorrow. We've got a lot of, over a million people losing their benefits for jobless. There's still a big problem in unemployment in this country. There's a lot of issues to be concerned about, but as long as money stays cheap, the market will probably continue to rally. Now, we did see a tick over and a close over 3% in the tenure today, which could create a little volatility, a little action here. All right, UD, Sandy came out with the most interesting fact. I don't want to drown our viewers in, in stats here, but it is a fascinating statistic that 80% of the time when a market has rallied 20% 20, 20 or more over the past 50 years or so, the next year has also been a good year. So is, is that true this time, too? I think probably, and not only that, to further the stat a little bit, the 14 times on the average, the S&P went up 16%. Even over the 17 times, S&P's up about 10% or so. So it looks like it should continue. But to pick up a little bit of what Todd is saying, that I just think going forward next year, yeah, the uptrend is still there, but I think the volatility will pick up a little bit. I think the tapering is not going to be as smooth as people think, thus pick up in volatility probably a little bit more of a back and fill type of action in the market eventually with an uptrend but there will be dips along the way you know, it's a little bit bigger than now you know what jeff because you're saying that the fed will be the cause of that volatility next year yeah, I think so. I think, you know, people are pretty, uh, being not complacent with the market, but being complacent with the tapering, saying that no big deal, $75 billion a month, uh, well, uh, oh. a, a tapering is just going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I think that will bring some negative okay. effect to the market, if not at least psychologically. Okay, well, actually, it's funny because you agree with Jeff, and that actually I was sending that to Jeff. Oh, I don't think heard me, but Jeff, you're saying the same thing that UD is, that you think the Fed is going to be the cause of the volatility uh, next year. But can you expand on that just a little bit? I agree with all the statements that have been made. We have to understand that we're in an area that we've never experienced before where we look back 80 years or 100 years. So it's saying that it's going to be different. I really believe that it's going to be different because we have to deal with the Fed and how they're going to react to the employment numbers. And I think the Fed is getting the employment numbers somewhat wrong and to understand how the demographics of our country are changing and to go ahead and stick to, hey, we have to get unemployment under 6.5%, I think they're focused on the wrong numbers. And I think what they really need to focus on coming up is what is going to be the wage increases that we're going to see in the future because people are seeing and we're getting good reports. And now I think employees are going to go to employers and ask for more income. 
and that's going to increase wages, and that's going to be a fear for the Fed, and they're going to have a very difficult uh, balance on how much they taper, and if they lose control of the interest rate market, which I think they're starting to do, what do they do? Do they go ahead and start printing money again? Yeah. So well, they're going to have actually, a very Sandy, difficult that's a great balance point. here. We have seen interest rates tick up a, a little bit, but they are over 3% on the 10-year. That's kind of like one of, those, one of those red flags that comes on when interest rates for the 10-year go above 3%. People start to get a little nervous about what happens. I'm just wondering if the world start, starts to sell all these U.S. bonds, if China and all these other countries have been buying bonds by the trillions of dollars from the United States, if if they start getting sick of our bonds and start selling them off, how else are they going to sell them but by raising rates? Well, there, there's no big bets on the table that that's going to happen anytime soon. Uh, we're still still seen as the golden ticket, at least for now. Uh, so there's not ex expectations, at least that I hear uh, on the Sandy, I gotta, uh, Sandy I'm sorry to push back, but we have already seen signs of it. I, I, Jeff, am I mm -hmm. wrong? I, I think we have yep. seen signs that they are. There is just a beginning. Maybe it's not a. It's too early to say sell off, but there is some sales of these things going on, right, Jeff? David, it, it, not only in China, around the world, there's been net sellers, but what we have to understand is bondholders in the United States have had a great run for 30 years. Bondholders are normally mm. income people. They need income, they need the interest, and now when they start to see their mm. principal go down because interest rates have doubled since May, they start to get skittish, and instead of just hanging in there, they're going to go ahead and liquidate it because they see their principal going down. And I think that's one of going to be the driving force in interest rates is the bondholder, the income produced, the person that's needing income from these right. bonds is going to start to let go of these bonds because for the last six months, things sure. have not looked well in their statements. You know what, Yudi, I do want to get to, I mean, we, we can't ignore that equities are the story of 2013. They may be going into next year. And you like Humana, and I think that is interesting with all the back and forth that we have had over Obamacare, that you're picking a stock like Humana, Yudi. Why? Yeah, you know, you think about it, Obamacare is a disaster. There's no doubt about that. However, it's estimated that there's about, what, 15 million Americans that has to get on the uh, Affordable uh, Care Health Program. So that's 20 or 15 million new customers to the entire sector. And the stock's so, uh, at 50% over the last year to date, 50%. I mean, there you yeah, go. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's more. Don't forget, there's only about, what, maybe 1.5 million people that has signed up. As I was walking in from the green room, actually, a nice lady who was helping me was telling me that she's trying to sign up, and her uh, health care has risen by about 170 bucks to about $600 just for one person. So where's all that money going? All that money is going to the health care industry. But, Yudi, let, let me push back a little bit on that, because sure. uh, young people, the president has, has recognized at least partially that this thing is a disaster. He's extended the time that people can register. He's told young people now that they don't have to sign up for, for plans that have all the bells and whistles that cost a lot of money. They can just get one of these catastrophic plans, which means less money for insurers. Do you think they've already had their run-up? No, I, I think there's more. Don't forget, uh, it's not whatever it is, it's not going to be repealed, right? So it's still there. And like I said, I it's estimated know. at the end, maybe 15 million people needs to be signed up. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's only about one and a half to two million. So it's still a long way to go. You know, Todd, one of the things as we talk about, whether it's health care, whether it's employment or unemployment, uh, is the overall economy and GDP. And that's something that I know you're going to have to be watching. We got this amazing, Todd, GDP reading for the third quarter. But I'm wondering if you think the economy can really continue that because that puts everything at risk not just equities but bonds I mean across the board what do you say I don't I don't think that I think the number you're gonna find out is gonna be adjusted down later I don't think we can really? support that I think we've got some real issues coming on here even going through the fourth quarter here, you know we've got retail sales which are going well except that they're giving the product away there's no real margins here I think we're gonna see these numbers will be revised down and we're gonna still continue listen the, the, the bottom line is the market itself will continue higher as long as the money stays cheap. You know, as much as I'd like to say that it's time to right. sell and that we're going to go lower, and there may be a correction, but right now, you can't fight what's going on. Sandy, you know, we aren't I, really watching numbers. Okay, or watching I, I just want to round this out, Sandy, and talk about oil for a second, because we did have it pop above yes. $100 a barrel today. Is that a trend that's going to continue, and how will that boil down to the gas station? 
I'm already talking to, to my sources, David, who are saying that commodities could be the big surprise of 2014. Uh, of course, we've heard, heard all the major Wall Street analysts very bearish when it comes to gold and oil and copper. Uh, because of the economic forecast for 2014, they've been laying off commodity traders left and right. But guess what? Crude finished up with two days left in the year, uh, trading year, above $100 a barrel. Beef prices, all-time record high on a crunch in supplies and forecast for growing demand in the new year, guess what? They could be the big surprise. So uh, we saw huge drawdowns in oil. The world is consuming more raw materials. This is going to be key focus as we enter the new year because, David, that's tied directly to what the Fed does. If they continue to uh, pump the system with easy money and buy back those bonds, the dollar remains weak, and that could boost yeah. those commodity Bingo. prices. So that could be a big upset. Yep. Yep. The drugs keep uh, being doled out. Well, thank you to Yudi Chang and Jeff Duncan. Sandra Smith, of course, thank you as well. Todd Horowitz, we're going to come back to you shortly for the S&P futures close. Wonderful stuff. Good market wrap. Yeah. All right, markets at new highs have helped.